It's safe to say that a lot of people are unhappy with the state of AAA gaming these days, and I don't know that I can blame them. Buggy and incomplete games, delays, microtransactions, devs and community managers going after fans? It's all very... disappointing. But I wanted to address the gamers that feel their interests are under attack. I feel like we've always been a misunderstood bunch, us gamers. I mean, there are a lot of us. Almost too many to paint with such a broad brush, you might think. There's really no single thing that unifies any of us, other than being human. No gender, no race, no religion, nothing. Except for our love of games. I don't know about you, but I kind of like that. I like that I can have one thing in common with someone when everything else could be different. I can share an appreciation for something with a complete and total stranger, and build an understanding, maybe learn something, maybe even develop a friendship out of it. Right now, there's a lot of noise going on, people out there trying to shame us for liking what we like in our games and attacking us for being protective of an interest that we love, labeling us toxic, sexist, all sorts of nasty things. But all they're really showing is their ignorance about us and their unwillingness to see us as individuals. There we go with the broad brush again. Look, let me tell you something. You're never going to win with these people. All they're going to do is drag you down and piss you off so that when you respond out of anger, they can then label you as toxic and intolerant. I want to paraphrase something from Mass Effect 2, said by the Warlord Okia when you go to get him to be part of your crew and stop the collector attacks, but then he dies and then you got to take Grunt instead. Sorry for the spoilers, but the game came out in 2011, so you should go play that if you haven't already. It's really good. Anyway, he says something that really sticks with me. So I'm going to paraphrase. He says, The greatest insult you can inflict upon an enemy is to ignore them. So never mind all that noise. Let him go scream into the void for all you care. What's important to remember is that you as the customer have a hell of a lot of power. You decide how successful a product is. Sure, the developers can give the product life, but you are the one that helps to sustain that life. With your cash. With your time with your creativity, with your word of mouth. Look, it's going to take some time, but companies will eventually change course and deliver to the customer more of what actually sells, more of what they actually want. It's in their best interest to do so. We just got to tell them what it is and what it isn't. But don't expect a traditional apology. You're never going to get it. These game companies will almost always pivot in a way that seems like it was planned all along. That's their version of accountability, I guess. Unless there's lawsuits. Then the fur starts flying. <laughs> the best way we can tell these companies what we want and what we don't is with our wallets. Let these fools on Twitter or Rex or whatever the hell it's called these days, the ones that don't make any attempt to understand us, let them waste their energy. What they're saying and why they're saying it doesn't have to matter to you at all. Enjoy what you enjoy. Support what you want to support. And play the games you want to play. So what can you do in the meantime? Well, some of you may want to consider adopting more of a patient gamer mentality. That means waiting a few months or so after a game releases so you can see what it's actually about without all the noise of the hype cycle interfering with your judgment. You can see real reviews. Not just the ones from game journalists that function as an extension of a studio's marketing department. Catch streams and playthroughs and make a more informed decision that benefits you. You'll also get a game that probably has less bugs and might even be on sale, so win-win. It's not for everybody, I know that, but it is another option. And you don't have to do this for all studios, maybe just the ones that have broken your trust one too many times. But whatever works for you. You could also consider playing some indie games. There are so many good ones out there and lots of content creators specializing in it. A lot of the indie devs are active on social media too, so you can get an honest sneak peek at what they're working on, rather than a dishonest hype trailer. On top of that, you're not going to be paying the AAA or even quadruple A price tag on these, so your money's going to go further. You could also go through your backlog. I mean, come on, we've all got one, right? You probably got a bunch of games in there that are worth your time. Why not play a few of those? And finally, play some retro games. Gamers these days are mostly playing games that are released six years old. I wonder if there's a reason for that. 
To go back to indie games for a moment, you'd be amazed at what some of these devs are cooking up that looks and feels like a retro game. It is amazing. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that. I made this video because I'm sick of seeing people get abused, scammed, or screwed. For a lot of people, games function as a means of escape from the troubles and stresses of real life. And there ain't no shame in that. I mean, we all need a break sometime. But honestly, I'd like to know what you think. You got an opinion, you agree, you disagree, whatever. Just put it in the comments and we'll chat about it. But until next time, so long, my friends. Keep gaming.